Hello Minders, welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor and we're going to take a look at days 21 through 27. Almost done with this challenge. Uh, I want to do things a little differently though today. Uh, I'm going to go through and just kind of talk about not only the paintings and I probably am not going to do them in the order that I painted them uh, but I also want to talk about what I've learned so far. This was really critical for me to just sort of stretch. I want to share those things with you. Hopefully they will help you. So here we go. This is day 21. And I uh, just wanted to do a portrait again. I wanted to do something that was nice and expressive. Actually the, the photo here. Let me show you the photo. I had to zoom way in on this photo. This is off of Sketchy. But I liked the clothing. The way the clothing hung on her. The way the light hit it and accentuated her sort of her face and the folds in the clothing uh, I just thought it'd make for something dynamic and so when I painted it I thought let's let's get some detail in the face but be as expressive as I can everywhere else well that brings me to lesson number one not necessarily pertaining to this if there are some of you out there that have thought about getting into a challenge and we got a big one coming next month world watercolor month is coming next month and if you want to do the daily challenge you can uh, there will be daily prompts and there will be just like there is with this 3030 challenge there will be a website that you can share your work you can hashtag your work and you can check out all the work that everyone else is doing now I will be doing some work for World Watercolor Month, it just won't be anywhere near 30. In October, there's Inktober, and you can search anywhere on the internet pretty much and find art challenges all over the place. There's just quite a few of them. So I guess number one in things that I've learned or ideas that I've reinforced is the value of a challenge is to challenge yourself. A lot of people just, you know, they want to just throw their art out there and see what people think. Well, that's not really challenging yourself. Um, most people are going to either say they like what you're doing or they're not going to say anything. I mean, let's be frank about it. Uh, if you really want to get something out of a challenge, um, and there's nothing wrong with posting your art, don't get me wrong, uh, to share it. But it, you should have definite goals in mind. I, you will get so much more out of it. Challenge yourself, whether you do all 30, 31, whatever the month is, and these challenges, whether you complete them, whether you skip a day, for the most part, people aren't going to aren't gonna care. But the only person you're going to help by doing them all is yourself. And that brings me to my second point. Repetition is key. I mean, the, I got so much from the repetition. And doing something daily, it just, it really helped reinforce the things I was trying, reinforce the things I learned. So this is day 22, just to kind of go along with the repetition idea. Uh, I did this as that sort of line and wash. You can't really tell it because I completely painted over the line. Um, but again, the challenge was for me, the line and wash technique that I was trying to further or develop, uh, was important to me and learning a process to go along with it so I could have added a little bit of paint or a lot of paint and that's been sort of the joy of exploring this process and this brings up another thing that I've learned or had reinforced and that's look for subjects in the things you see every day and the things around you in what may seem like the ordinary or the mundane You know, it's really easy to hold off painting or drawing because we don't think we have a great subject. And really, uh, to practice, to get into a rhythm, just look around you. This is just trees that are out near my driveway, and at certain times of the day, the light hits them, and they make patterns on the trunks that are very dynamic. And I loved it. I wanted to do a study of that. And this brings me to another point. And this is sort of a personal lesson. In my art world, what excites me is light. Uh, 
The way I put it is this. Light is the key player on my art stage. There are so many subjects out there. Nothing excites me more than interesting light, dynamic light patterns. So I think that's something I knew, but uh, it just really helped me to put it into words. This is day 23. Actually, the photo was not that interesting, um, but it had some possibilities, and I knew I could enhance the shadows that I saw and make it more dynamic. I actually used the line and wash technique. This was sort of the line. This was a sort of a case of how far can I take the line? Uh, can I make it as though I'm doing this as a pen and ink, only with a brush? And that was what I experimented with. And there you see the two. There you see, you know, sort of the first stage and then me taking it a stage further. And that brings me to another point. In challenges, and this goes along with challenging yourself, but in challenges, um, or anytime you sketch, when you're practicing, ask yourself the what if questions. You can sure just sketch something just to practice sketching it, but ask the what if question. I usually do this, but what if I did that? So that was another one. Another big one for me is, what if I used a rigger like a pen? What if I drew with watercolor? And you can actually use a dip pen to draw with watercolor if you want to. I uh, don't want to take a dip pen into the field. I developed this specifically for location sketching style, but you know, that's you get the point. You can do that testing. You can do that um, experimentation and ask those what if questions. Challenges are great for that. It's valuable to keep doing. All right, so let's talk about this. This was sort of my doldrum day. I don't know if I just didn't get enough sleep or what. I really wasn't tired of the challenge so much as this day. I just, I wanted a break. I just wanted to stop. And I could have done it. I probably could have caught up the next day. But I thought, okay, just find something interesting, um, but easy. To me, this was easy. I did more of the line technique. I've had this photograph for a while with the idea that I would do a sketch of it. It kind of fits into the point I made before about look around you for the mundane. This was nothing but a shrub that had been pruned over many seasons. And if you've ever seen that, you know, when they get pruned, they sort of nodule up or make these kind of blunt, stumpy ends, and then they put out new growth but it makes really interesting design. So I'm just reminding myself not to go looking for the iconic scene, for the really groundbreaking kind of image, the image that, you know, is going to wow everybody, but to look around at the mundane stuff. The other thing is, I remind myself of this all the time, but I, I try to remind myself to keep design in my work. Design, I've described before in other videos as composition on steroids. This object here, or this limb, has an interesting design. You know, it comes in at this angle, which is nice composition, but all of this and then the way those finger up, it's more than composition. It's a realistic, sort of recognizable element, but I think that made this successful in what I had intended for this just to be an easy kind of way out on a day I didn't feel like painting turned out to be something that I'm pleased to have in my sketchbook. Everything can play into the design. You know, the line, the color, the composition, of course, the brush strokes can hold shape and add graphic elements to something and play into the design. All right, so my Star Wars piece. I think I surprised a lot of people with this. Shouldn't be too surprised though. If you've seen my Star Wars, I have a ton of Star Wars t-shirts. From a book called The Art of Star Wars, Force Awakens. This was a concept for a scene I don't think they ever made. This was the scene, if you're not following me on Instagram and haven't seen it. It was real dark there, but I tried to treat it more as a line art. And if you've seen the movie, you know this girl Ray, and that doesn't look like who they ended up casting for it. But, you know, she was sort of a scavenger. I did this as a line art piece with just very minimal color and I wanted to pay a lot of attention to abbreviation and simplification. Here was the line art phase of that 
before I added color. And I may do some pieces like this, some sketches, just leave them in my sketchbook like that because uh, I was really kind of pleased with that sketch. Almost hated to add color to it. It had a really neat feeling to it. But this brings me to the next lesson that I think I've learned on several of these. Uh, I think it came in here because I was paying a lot of attention to it. And that is the importance of subtlety and understatement. Now, I was not going to go do a full rendering like that concept painting in the book. I just wanted something uh, just simple, something to just get across the impression of the scene. Didn't matter if it was loose. And so I focused a lot on subtlety, and I was happy that I did. I, I tend to go the opposite way a lot of times. Subtlety and understatement, I, th I think, is the opposite of overworking. But I think that was a great lesson. All right, here was another one. I think this surprised a lot of people, including myself. Since I had so much fun with that Star Wars piece, um, I wanted to do another um, sketch from a concept book, concept art book. And so I pulled out The Hobbit, um, The Unexpected Journey. There was a painting, and I keep I have to remember that a lot of some of you don't follow me on Instagram, so you may not have seen these. This was the painting. This was a concept for Radagast's house. If you know, if you've seen the movie, you know who that is. But he's this old wizard that lives in the, if you're not at all into Tolkien, he's this old wizard that lives in the woods, and that was supposedly one of the concepts for his house. Okay, so I thought, okay, I'll just do a sketch of that. It quickly devolved from the line drawing kind of concept that I was trying for uh, into something that was uh, overworked and dark really was just unwilling to let go of it. So I pulled out some of my my old standard illustration multimedia techniques, which involved a lot of opacity. I, it really was just gel pen and colored pencil. I really went in here and modeled this tree fairly heavily with colored pencil. That had just totally gone to crap. Um, added highlights in the building where they had gotten obliterated. Detailed out this thatched roof which had totally gotten muddled and obliterated and I did sort of layers of gel pen and layering color over that and then more gel pen and a little bit of colored pencil. Uh, I had a real kind of dark muddled side of this building. It, it wasn't making a lot of sense so I went in there and uh, re-rendered some of those shapes, added an interesting shadow which I, I tried to change the light scheme of this and have some sun coming in rather than the, the completely shaded uh, backlit image in the painting. So it turned out kind of fun, something I really kind of enjoyed, but totally missed the mark of where I was originally headed, which is okay. You know, you remain uh, flexible in these pieces. Sometimes you can just say, okay, well, that's not going to work that way, so I'm going to have to make it work a different way. When I got to the end, I was almost prepared to to redo whole parts of this and either gouache or an acrylic. <laughs> Thankfully I didn't have to do that. It's mostly watercolor, but uh, I did use a lot of colored pencil in here. Colored pencil, by the way, uh, if you're into multimedia or mixed media, I should say, colored pencil is great over dark watercolor. That is an oft-used technique with uh, mixed media artists and mixed media illustrators. I kind of forgot how much I enjoy it and how much fun it was. So maybe something, I, I know I had some requests on Instagram to, hey, maybe explore that. So one of those things that just sort of took an unexpected turn. But I'll just use this, it's not particularly pertaining to this, but another lesson that came up uh, and reinforced something I've been trying to teach myself, and that is keep life and color in my shadows. I felt like I was successful here, here, uh, because I was paying attention to it. So rather than follow all the just sort of drab browns um, that reality has, I just put some purples and red browns and let the colors mingle. I felt this carried out that idea fairly well. I was trying to get some, some blues and purples in the shadows. I really tried to do it here. I mean, I kind of went all out in here. There's like all kinds of purples, blue, greens, and reds back here. Uh, as long as the value is right, and that's the main thing, value is what's most important. As long as the value is right, uh, it's just, it seemed to work. So 
that was a great lesson. And I'm going to go back to this one. Uh, and this is a good lesson for everyone. It was a lesson that I was sort of uh, keeping un as an underlying lesson throughout the whole challenge. And that is to remind myself to stay out of my comfort zone. Now, not that this was particularly uncomfortable, but, you know, it's not the thing I normally paint. And since my last one, day 27, uh, is over here, oh, uh, this makes a nice contrast because I'm very comfortable with this kind of subject. I don't paint this as much. You know, keep in mind that you don't necessarily want to stay in your comfort zone in these challenges. You're challenging yourself. Don't forget that. So this goes back to uh, the line and wash technique that I was exploring and I was trying to again cut back on the number of washes that I was using and just see how abbreviated. The other lesson I was trying to keep in mind when I did this one was design. I thought I've lived almost all my life around the Smoky Mountains and this kind of scene is common. Lots of pictures I've done lots of scenes like this so I was comfortable I thought but I see designs when I look at like rocks and streams and deep cool forests I see design all the time. So I tried to keep this uh, very nicely designed. I tried to limit the washes, make them very abbreviated, very subtle. That gets back to that goal, that lesson I mentioned. Subtlety and understatement. And I'll tell you, uh, while it may not on the surface be the most impressive piece out of the group, I really felt like this uh, was the culmination of everything I was trying to do in this challenge. From an instructional point, from a challenging myself, sort of a proof of concept. This, for me, uh, just sort of rung the bell. It just sort of said, yeah. And now I can apply this to more complex or maybe even more interesting subjects. I don't know. But it's kind of hard to put into words. Let me just show you the line drawing before I, I colored this. And this is something that I might have actually been very happy to leave in my sketchbook just like that. Um, this was the, the line drawing done with the rigger. I used a couple of grayed out colors. And even as I was doing this, I was getting really excited. Uh, I almost wanted to leave it like this. Just kind of like I showed you on that Star Wars one. I thought, oh. But what that means to me is this, this technique will work as a location sketching technique that I could leave at several stages. That was exciting to me. And that kind of brings me to my last lesson. Lesson number 10. Exploration and discovery is exciting and vital. It'll energize your artwork. All of these other things that I've said, um, trying new things, stay, getting out of your comfort zone, entering a challenge to challenge yourself, putting more design into my work, Realizing that I love light and light play above all else. All of these things are discoveries or reinforcements of discoveries. These challenges really help you discover yourself. And um, you do not discover what you're best at by staying in your comfort zone. Some people stay in what they think is their best comfort zone. And a lot of times it may not be. Not only that, but you can show yourself what you don't like. I mean, you can prove to yourself, uh, I really don't like doing this very much. It kind of shatters preconceptions, too, about subjects. Anyway, uh, I think that's probably where I'll leave it. And I, there's still three days left to go, and I will do those. And we'll see those eventually. However, by way of announcement, I will not be doing a video next week. I'm taking a week vacation. I haven't done so in well over a year that may be just like weekends and even last year on vacation I actually recorded video so it was sort of a working vacation but this is not going to be a working vacation I'm, I'm actually going to take the week off and do some other things that I've needed to do so uh, look for another video in two weeks and I hope everybody in the states that celebrates Independence Day will have a happy and safe and joyous time with your family. Thanks to all of you minders for watching. Thank you so much patrons. Actually, you will probably be not be left out during my vacation. I actually have a couple videos that I plan to post during that time. Thank you everybody. We'll see you all in the next video.